from Quantum Agriculture, and I'm here with my dear friend Kim Green from the Adelaide Hills of Australia. Welcome, Kim. Thank you, Shabri. How are you all out there today? What a fine day we've got. <laughs> so what do you do? Uh, I'm a fifth generation apple and cherry grower down in Lenswood in South Australia. I've been doing biological farming since 2000, and in that we've morphed it into some organics, some biodynamics, and now some energy work. I also do radionics to complement um, all my farming practices. Okay. So what do you find the best about your radionics that you do? Oh, my radionics is my right-hand man. So I can diagnose, I can analyse, I can broadcast, I can make homeopathic preparations. It's just like a complete right-hand man that you can handball everything over there and that, uh, that process or that method really complements my, my farming practice. Yeah, I noticed in Hugh's book, Quantum Agriculture, that he's done a chapter on you, the, the Kim Green. You know? um, yeah. yeah. I suppose, uh, well, back in 93, I was awarded a Nuffield Farming Scholarship. So that uh, was a very big privilege. It allowed me to travel the world looking at, at that time, Apple and Cherry systems, systems more in tree training, rootstocks, etc., etc. But what it does is gives you a uh, thirst or a hunger for more knowledge. And from that, opportunities arose, and I've sort of followed that path now, sort of more to complete the system. And it is tough when you're, and you think, what's the point of five generations? Is mm. that you get really well entrenched in the mm. system by your parents, by your district, and it takes quite a bit of strength and uh, courage to develop something quite different against the flow of everybody. And, and from that Nuffield trip, I developed a tree training system for cherries, which cherries can grow traditionally 10 to 12, 15 metres high. Quite a social tree to, to harvest because you might have 10 people on the same tree for nearly a whole day. Wow. Whereas now I developed that we can pick them all from the ground and uh, from that they call it the KGB, the Kim Green Bush. Some feel a bit threatened because I think it's like the, the Russian ma- uh, Russian KGB. <laughs> so you got it, Shabri, that you know, it tries to bring a bit of humour into the way we teach and that uh, People feel quite relaxed when we bring humour to, to the table. So I work. In, I used to work quite a bit in uh, Oregon and Washington and California, and they sort of got it. Now I work a lot in Chile with their growers, and their cherry growers are really on a big uh, swing to high densities, a lot of production. They're aiming at China and doing extremely well. So I go over and assist these guys, and man, that's a lot of fun. Lot oh, of fun. good. <laughs> And what do you like about the KGB system as compared to the <clears throat> old way? Well, we can pick it all from the ground. Wow. Uh, and, of course, we use a lot of Vietnamese and ladies as well. And Ladies don't have the strength to carry big, long ladders around, so I just all our work's done from the ground, and the, the limbs are a bit like a fishing rod. When they've got the crop on, we can just pull them over, and then they go back. Uh-huh. And if a tree has too many stiff limbs, they're the first ones that you cut out. And I always have a saying, if you look at a tree and, and observe it, what, what makes a big tree? And it's big limbs. Mm-hmm. So we remove those big limbs early in its life and then they send up replacement limbs, mm-hmm. which are a lot lighter, and I call them the female limbs. The big limbs are male. They're usually strong and upright, but they don't give you too much fruit, mm-hmm. whereas the females, they're what you want. So you've got to nurture them, so they take, take a lot more... Uh, care and maintenance <laughs> hello yeah so we that can relate to the female race as well but we love them we love them to death those sort of limbs you love them to life yeah yeah that's right love them to life <laughs> and look they can break your heart the yep. rain can come yeah. and crack and it can break your heart and uh, yeah. so i've been following this remineralizing that hugh t- talks a lot about getting the silica into the system getting silica into the fruit to give it some flexibility and my trees have changed their colour. Hugh always talked about uh, having the trees have a silvery glow and my cherries are doing that now. So uh, so that's a piece of the puzzle 
Yeah, it's like a detective story farming. You've got to find this piece of the, this clue, that clue. Yeah. And there's someone out there that will give you a clue as mm-hmm. long as you're looking for a clue. Not as long as you're not bogged down and I know it all now and I'm right. Like I've got my training part right, but it's my soil and my energy now that I'm working for. To, and you've been doing radionics about 20 years now, haven't you? Yeah. That's yeah. amazing. And that was a tough tough stuff. I remember going to an Arden Anderson, John Pannon workshop in 2000 and had not a clue, not a clue. And now, uh, right into it. It's just mm-hmm. natural now. It's just, it's just like getting up in the bed in the morning. It just comes natural. Sometimes yeah. a bit hard. but Yeah. Natural. And what do you, how do you use it with your trees, your farm? How? Um, I can do it like a traditional uh, soil analysis through that. Mm-hmm. Uh, it'll have numbers for nitrogen, numbers for calcium and boron, so you can pull those numbers up and douse on it, scan on it. I have a stick plate that when you get to the, the accuracy, it'll stick. your fingers mm-hmm. will stick to the plate. So that's like a dowsing in a way. Yes, this is dowsing. Yeah. And from that you can determine whether you're short in minerals or there's a toxicity, and it could be really high magnesium. So then you have a reagent sheet, which is all your products. So if you've got a, if you've got a, uh, if we go back to the calcium, if you have a calcium deficiency, and you're going to put on something, what calcium is it? Now, do you mean put on something radionically or physically? Both. You Both. ask, you douse to say whether I need to do a physical application, whether I do a okay. broadcast, okay. Uh, whether you do it as a foliar, whether you do it as a ground. So if it was a calcium, do you put on gypsum? Do you put on lime? Do you put on calcium nitrate? Do you mm-hmm. put on calcium chloride? Yeah. Do you put on... So all that's done through dowsing then? Yeah. Or what, which the stick plate for you is yeah. your dowsing. Yeah. yeah. And the stick plate works a lot faster. Yeah. I can just go bang, 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 yeah. bang on questions. Yeah. Uh, but it comes up with what's complementary to that plant or that soil at this time. Mm-hmm. And you do it plot by plot, don't <clears> you? I you, do. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. And what I love about Kim is he keeps good records. My word, that's... Uh, I've kept every application with its um, radionic scanning numbers. Mm-hmm. So when you get the numbers, you come, the calcium might want to go on with, say, boron and some fish and some kelp. Yep. So when we douse, we, we come up with like a recipe. Mm-hmm. It's a bit like a cake. You put the flour in and then you put the milk in and then you put the butter in. Mm-hmm. So you know, And then you shake it all about and cook it. And then you put your icing on and your candles. <laughs> well, you don't you don't put the candles in first. So when you're yeah. putting out a foliar, you don't put candles out first. You, yeah. There's a certain order. Yeah. So actually, karma. that's something I've been questioning. You know, to apply a physical substance through radionics, if it works. So I'm glad to see it is complementary. You, you do both if yeah. it's called for. Yeah. Well, and look, you can douse on all that, but you yeah. know, Hugh suggests that you can put on a tenth of the substance, yeah. the, the physical product and enhance it with a radionic scan. Yeah. Yeah. Well, at the moment, at home, it's winter. Uh, the birds are hungry, particularly the lorikeets. So they're at my buds, or my fruit buds on the cherries. Mm. And it's really steep country. It's wet. How do you put something to deter them? So I scan my birds to find out what they don't really like, and then just broadcast that, that. What have you found they don't you? really like? Uh, I think what I'm using at the moment is the biodynamic preps. Mm -hmm. So it's not necessarily that they don't like, but it changes the frequency of the farm. It just makes it a very uncomfortable place. I I call it um, the music balancer. So if... Yeah, sort of like you and the orchestra, you know. Yeah. yeah. So radionics is uh, a bit like listening to a DVD, Mm. but the real thing is like going to a concert. No, we can't go to a concert every day. Mm-hmm. So the DVD brings back that concert movement of if we went. So with the the, bon, um, the frequency, it's just trying to make the place a little bit uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. So it's a bit like if we were listening to, if techno music was on in there, the doof, 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 most of us would migrate out of the room. Like there'd be a few that stay in there, the, maybe the young ones. So the birds migrate out because... So when you've done the biodynamic preps radionically... Uh, what's the general vitality? How does that change? Because I know you scan for general vitality, yeah. sometimes known as GV. <coughs> That's correct. So the GV is your base figure mm-hmm. and, and products, reagents, whatever you want to call them, either lift or drop the GV. So mm-hmm. are they good for you or not so good for you? 
So we will, I will go through the radionic cards and just douse on them in an order. So just say GV's 500, uh, 500 BD 500 might lift it to 650. Got it. But silica might drop it to 450. Might. 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 Yeah. So it's it's you all of a sudden you see what's what that bird is receptive to or yeah. it's repelling it. Yeah. And then you check your farm to make sure that those products going out aren't detrimental to the farm. So you have sort of two targets. Yep. The the, the birds farm and the farm. And the farm. Yeah. Wow, and you've had great success with scaring yeah. away birds. Yeah, we had a, a few years ago, the birds moved in on Christmas time, and the cherries are all netted because we wouldn't get a crop without uh, netting. And they moved in on apples that were the size of a ping pong ball, and the lorikeets were in there thousands and thousands, and neighbours were shooting, but it didn't deter the birds. They don't have a fear of man, so they just kept coming in, and they were destroying the crop before our eyes, so I... Um, a friend of mine suggested to uh, look at the BD preps in a view of some of the preps work well in the atmosphere and some work well in the soil. So he said birds being a, an atmosphere mm-hmm. being. Mm-hmm. And at that time it was really hot, so we were, in, we were magnifying the atmosphere mm-hmm. uh, energy. So we tried to balance that up with the calcium side yeah, or the, the soil. 500. soil. Yeah. yeah, so I selected the, a bird. And I, I think it sort of got shot somewhere along the line. And I, so I used the physical bird and found out what dropped its energy mm-hmm. and then broadcast that energy to the farm. And I sent Dad out on his four-wheeler to have a look around and he came back and, he, and it was two days and the birds had moved off the farm. But when he went to my neighbour, he said he's just, he's just pulling his hair out because there's so many birds on his farm. And yet we're right alongside uh, the birds stopped eating our apples. Yep. So that yep. was really <laughs> quite convincing. Quite proving that... Uh, quite con- yes. Well, not only that the biodynamic preps can do that, but that radionically mm. you can do it. You didn't have to go out and stir and spray the preps. Because no. no. you probably couldn't have. Well, sometimes when you're middle of harvest and yep. you, something's chewing you up and you just don't have that time, or once the nets are on the cherries, we can't get back in there anyway. So I'll often send out a, uh, a broadcast of one of my... Reagents could be, be BD. Be, yeah, being the previous chair of Biodynamic Agriculture Australia, and now another time you're taking the courage to be a board member. Um, what, what, um, because I've been looking at this, like our new instrument, and I see, because I believe that we should stir the preps and put them on the farm, mm-hmm. but then I think there's <laughs> other preps, like what they call the quote compost preps, they're a bit harder to get your hands on. So I've been thinking that's where our instrument will be like. That's the way to get those preps out yeah. easier and and more often when needed, like you're talking about with those birds. And 